Hello everyone, I'm Neil Rudd. Welcome to the Rovers Roundup Live. We're back again for the new season, which we can look forward to. We're back on your screens. Great to be here. And of course, we've got the main man to have a chat to, uh, our head coach, Tony Smith. Hello, Tony. How are you? Hi, Neil. Very well, thanks. Um, how is pre-season going? Great. Yeah, really enjoying it. It's uh, There's a good vibe about us. There's... Uh, some new faces, some, some really good energy and, uh, you know, some excitement about getting back to it. And, um, yeah, the players have been exceptional, really, in terms of the way they're applying themselves. And, uh, you know, we're, we're very, very grateful that we're able to be back to and uh, knowing that a lot of industries haven't been able to get back to any sort of normality. I won't say we're exactly normal um, in terms of how we prepare, but uh, it's great that we're allowed to and, and um, you know, we feel very privileged to have that, you know, that way of getting together and, and getting ready to. How has the COVID restrictions affected what you've uh, wanted to do, what you are doing in terms of training? Oh, yeah, there's there's been a lot of hoops to jump through, and um, but we accept that and... Um, it's not always easy when you're preparing a rugby league team, but um, at the same time we're trying our best to adhere to them, and and uh, you know we've, we're wearing our masks and and doing all the right things where we can as as best we can, and uh, and so far really we've done a pretty good job of it. Um, you know we haven't had an outbreak this year, touch wood. Um, that doesn't mean to say that we won't, but um, we'd like to think that we. We won't. Um, we've only had one staff member off this year, you know. So I think it shows that we're doing a lot of things right. Plus, we've, you know, there's a bit of luck. I think if it's in your community and rife in your community, I think there's not a whole lot you can do. I think you're gonna you're gonna have cases. But um, at the moment, we're um, we're trying to do our best to stem it, and we've we've done a pretty good job of that. So, but you know, it it, it is difficult. I won't say it's easy. And there's some things in terms of preparing a team we'd like to be doing that we can't do together, you know, and it's you know, it's a little disjointed, but it's the same for everybody. So hopefully that uh, balances itself out. Just give uh, the fans an idea of, of the sort of things you're doing at the moment. It's the 26th of February. We're two or three weeks away from uh, 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 a pre-season friendly yep. against Castleford. We're about a month away from the start of the season. What are you actually doing with the guys at the moment in training? What's a typical day for you as we stand? Yeah, well, mostly we've got to th split into three groups. And so so if we get an infection, um, a, a breakout in, in one group, hopefully it's only within one group and we're not sharing it amongst the whole lot at one go. And um, so... The, the same groups stick together um, and have done um, since we've resumed. So whilst one group, you know, really have a whole lot of time together and get that camaraderie, then it's team bonding within their group, that group. There's 10 of them in each of the groups. And, you know, it would be nice to be able to be as a whole more often. Um, we are allowed to do some of, some of that uh, whole group stuff outside, but any of our gym work, any of the you know, meetings, for instance, you know, any of those sort of things, they've got to be done in smaller groups. So, and, and even in terms of uh, they, these guys used to have breakfast together and then lunch together and they can't do that anymore. You know, there's restrictions on that. They can't eat in the same rooms as each other and all sorts of yeah. things. So, you know, it just, it, I know it doesn't sound big, but, you know, it, it's... It just makes it hard for them to get to know each other as well as you would like if you're coaching a team that you want to bond together. But listen, when they do, they've they've got a good they've got a good mix with each other. But um, and those times will come and they'll be ahead of us. But um, you know, we're we're having regular uh, testing and uh, we every morning uh, we have to fill out our our wellness sheets and make sure that everybody's fit and healthy before they enter through the door and. Um, you know, getting young men to remember to do these certain things and keeping them in order. Um, you know, I'm sure parents out there will understand that um, the challenges that we're, we're going through as a coaching staff trying to keep them on track. But on the whole, they've been very, very good. Obviously, one of the things that uh, 
gets fans excited pre-season is, is new signings, the new faces. Uh, let's have a look at some of those, the, some of the, the guys you've got in, uh, you know, and why you've decided to go with these people, why have you recruited them. So let's just start with Al, randomly start with Albert Vetter. He's, he's a big guy. He's going to be uh, possibly playing front row. What, what, why, why did you look at him and decide he, we, we want him? Yeah, he, he, he's a he's a big man. He's a handful when he carries the ball, and uh, you know he, he adds some impact. And you know that's we need some impact. Um, dare I say it? And uh, you know I know he's not going to be with us in terms of playing this year, and but you know we missed Mossy a whole lot last year, and and he was that player for us that to give us a a lift and a boost and a, some energy, whether it be starting games to get us off on the on the right foot or to come off the bench and, and really go and skittle some people apart. And, and Albert, that's what we're bringing him in to do. And some, some weeks um, he'll, he'll be a starting player and have some impact from early in the game. But then again, um, there'll be other days where we feel it best that he come off the bench and come, come on and skittle some people then. But, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a mountain of a bloke. Um, he's... He's um, had some bad luck over over Christmas in terms of his training, and he's he's strained his hamstring, and he's probably in one of those big men that he doesn't have to have much time off training to put on a bit of weight, and he put on a bit of weight, and he's 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 stripped it, um, he's stripping it in the process of it, and um, uh, I think in the last week and a half he's lost six kg, so he's he's really working hard for it, but um, Albie's been been great in terms of. He came from a really strong program in Melbourne as well. That was important for us. Um, and he brings some of his experience from a successful club and, and uh, you know, a team of champions. And he can bring some of that attitude to us and help us and contribute to the squad. Somebody who, I mean, I, I, I said, wow, when I saw that we'd signed Ryan Hall. Uh, mm. when, when somebody of his uh, ex- experience... Uh, his quality is available to sign. There's no surprise you'll 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 want to get him on the dotted line. So you'll be excited to get him in. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Was um, you know he was a delight to coach many all those years ago when I had the privilege of coaching him back when he I gave him his first match for uh, for Leeds and I think for England as well. So uh, Ryan and I have had some history, but. Um, uh, that aside, even if we hadn't had a history, you know, I've certainly admired his style and his ability and his size and his strength and his capabilities that he's uh, he's gone on to have. Was that a factor for him, uh, the fact that you'd, you'd been together before? You'd have to ask him that. I think I've heard him say so, you know, um, also... You know, the fact that he's worked with Denny before and, and we're both here, I think that's probably contributed as well. But, you know, we also you know, told him where our future's lying and what we're trying to build here and, and the, the path that we're, we're progressing down and the steps to get there. And he was very excited about it. And um, so it wasn't a hard sell for, for Ryan. He, he was keen to come and he wants to be part of it. And he's been terrific, honestly. Um, you know, his leadership um, and maturity and uh, that he's shown so far has been a huge influence on the group and uh, and on some of the young players, which he, he'll help educate for us. Uh, Brad Takarangi, another exciting signing, the one one another signing that's got the fans excited uh, in terms of uh, his clear ability and uh, his experience as well. He looks like a player who, you know, he, he's, he's going to bring some excitement onto the pitch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've just got to get the ball in his hands often enough. He's one of those that you get him to carry the ball often enough, things are going to happen, you know. And I don't want to build him up too much and put too much pressure on. But, yeah, uh, uh, as he calls himself, he's a footy player. Yeah, He gets through warm-ups and he gets through some of the physical sessions and does what he needs to. And then when we get into the practical and practice of games, he comes alive. He comes a lot, you know, and that's when he, you know, is really on song. You know, he he does the other stuff too. He understands he needs to do some of that, and I've I've seen much more enthusiastic trainers at different stages. Um, that's for sure. And, and back to Ryan Hall, he's exceptional. He's incredible, um, and sets really high standards there um, in terms of training. Um, Tucker's he he switches on when it's when it's time to play, and um, in our practice sessions, he's. 
you know, there's some real excitement about fellow players, um, by, from his fellow players about what he can do and certainly from his coaches as well. Well, I was going to mention that. that not only will these guys bring the talent themselves, but um, the, the potential, they've got the potential to uh, uh, spread some of that uh, excitement amongst the, the rest of the talent we've got in the squad and, and enhance the games of the players we've already got in, in the squad from last year. Oh, very much. Very much so, you know, but... And uh, we needed some more experienced players in here. We lost a few you know, from last year. A couple, you know, moved on or retired, and you know we needed some of that. And uh, we think that we're, we've got some really good ones to pass it on. And you've mentioned a couple a bit, you know, Corbin as well. I was just going to mention Corbin Sims. 140 games in the mm. NRL. He's only 28 years of age. Uh, big guy. Tons of enthusiasm. I uh, sure does, but he's got some tons of leadership in him also, and he's passing that on. And you know, he's he's been terrific so far, and he's a he's a great trainer, and he sets some you know really high standards in the training room and in the gym. And uh, I think he's he's had a, a, an enormous influence on us also. Um, and uh, you know, he'll also get out on the field and lead by example there. You know, he always wants to put his best foot forward and he gets a little frustrated if he if he makes a mistake here or there and he's sets some really high standards for himself. And that's not a, such a bad thing, but he's uh, he's also, you know, passing on some really good knowledge to the young guys and they're lapping it up. They're really responsive and, you know, so, yeah, in terms of recruitment, I think we've, we've brought some really good experienced players in there to to help some of the, the youth, and we are. We've got a, some young, a really young squad in comparison uh, to, um, to most. Um, I think we, our average is less than most, and, or, or if not everybody. Um, so we needed some people who have been there and done that and, and also experienced a whole lot of situations to come in and steady us um, at the right times as well as n know when to put a rocket up our our backsides and when it, when needed also. Yeah. We'll have a chat a little bit later about some of the the, the younger members of the squad and, and how you want to work with those. But uh, off the field, uh, Danny Maguire confirmed as uh, assistant coach that appointment over the winter as well. It must be fantastic to have to have Danny beside yeah. you as, as part of the off-field setup. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Danny's been terrific and you know, he's a he's a knowledgeable young man who's you know, we were really keen to learn the art of coaching, you know, and it is, it's a big learning curve for him at the moment and he's got, he's got a lot to offer um, and he, he's, you know, having some inf a lot of influence in our, our organisation and, and that's great, both on and off the field, you know, he's been helping out in recruitment areas and identifying, you know, different talents as well as, as, well as um, now dealing with some of the talents on the field. But I've, you know, I've got a terrific coaching staff and... You know, in both in terms of the physical uh, preparers and, and rehab areas, as well as the coaches themselves. And, you know, I've got the expertise of, of, of Denny, as you mentioned, and, and uh, Dave Hodgson and, and Stanley Jean. And all three of them are, are contributing a whole lot. And um, their range of knowledge is, is vast and their expertise is vast, you know, in, in their various areas. So... Um, they've been they've been terrific so far, and um, yeah, I think we're we're in a strong position coaching wise. Great stuff, Tony. Stick around. Uh, thank you very much for joining us for Rovers Round Up Live as we raise the excitement uh, ahead of the start of the new season. We're going to uh, talk about the fixture announcement today uh, in a few minutes' time, but we'll have a quick break. And we've been talking about some of those new recruitments. Let's give you a chance to get to know them a little bit better. Really, I never really watched. Um, I'd always like would rather be out in the street playing it and like that. So my parents never had like Sky, so I didn't really get to watch you know much rugby. So I never really watched it too much. Like uh, even when the, my first year when I signed at the Rhinos, uh, when I went to the first team squad, I didn't really know most of the players, which is quite unusual for you know academy players coming through. But that's just how I was. Um, I spent the last two years in a pretty decent spot out in uh, the eastern suburb in Sydney. Um, me and my family loved it. Uh, it was pretty top-notch, yeah. We had beaches and I love the warm weather. I love the suntan. 
Er wird zum ersten Mal an. Fear. Oh, Jesus. I don't know, really. Um, when, I was, when I was younger, it used to be heights. I think a common one is heights, but uh, just outside my grandma's house. Uh, she lived, uh, there's a motorway just not, not so far away from her house. Um, I'm walking over the bridge, you know, so you can see the motorway uh, below always used to get me. But I used to just, well, I didn't train myself. I just thought I'd just do it a couple of times and get used to it. And, you know, it kind of went away after that. Uh, well, I spent two years on a glorified uh, holiday, let's say that. But we love the, um, the Caribbean. Normally, when the rugby players get their, their break, it's normally November, December time. Um, you have to go pretty far on an aeroplane to get some decent weather, you know, because if you go around Europe around that time, it's not too, uh, not too good. So, you know, we don't get on a plane and go to uh, the Caribbean a little bit over there. Um, accomplishing on the jump, just I've won a couple of things uh, so far. I've played in some good teams. Um, yeah, so I've, so I've got six rings. Yeah. Um, hopefully, I've come back to that. Um, I grew up playing football. Um, good to see Leeds United back in the Premiership again. Uh, I do like watching that. I'm rubbish at football. I used to play it as a kid. Um, alongside rugby, but it came apparent I was much better at rugby than what I was at football. Uh, so, um, so football is pretty decent to watch. But I like playing golf. A lot of rugby players do playing golf because it's you know you got that competitive side to things. It's not too strenuous. Um, so yeah, I like playing golf. Um, some at monotone, as you tell by this interview. So already. Um, I've got a monotone voice, it's my interview voice and it's my public speaking voice, I go monotone, I can't help it, I just do. Um, depends how many pints I've had. Um, my wife doesn't put the, the cap on the um, toothpaste, so you get a bit of a crusty right. build up around the end, it's like, just put it on, it saves it. Uh, that's definitely one. Um, I don't like being late. Um, what did I do? What? I'm gonna do it. I've seen that episode of Friends when they all talk about going into that American super jaw or whatever. And they all had the you know things what they wanted to do, buy sports teams and all that sort of stuff. And Ross wanted to invest it in some high high rate bonds. Unfortunately I'm a Ross, I'm gonna invest it in some <laughs> Not really. I'm quite. Um, I sit and I sit and watch the uh, parties develop. I don't get into mix of it. I sit and just I'm quite comfortable just letting parties happen. And if all happens, uh, I'll join in obviously. But I don't come out, you know, centre stage and do party tricks. So you don't crack out a Rubik's cube. I don't bring it with. I don't take it around with me. But I can do a Rubik's well, cube. Just so it turns out, I've got one on me. Oh, that's well placed. That's isn't well placed. It? Isn't oh, it? Fantastic. Yeah. So rumour has it you can do it in under 80 seconds. Is it? Yeah. I've not done it in a while, can I just start without getting a stop clock out? Right, okay. really nice. we won't get the stop clock out in it. Just let me do it. Right. So have you got a method of how... Uh, yeah, so it? first step is uh, make a white cross on the bottom. Like that. Right. Okay. Then you've got to match up the middle squares with the adjacent white square. You see there, so that touches. Then you've got to fill in these, uh, these corner pieces with the right ones. So you get a full white square and all the corners are in the right place now. Then you've got to do the same for these, these side pieces here. So that should be all done now. So you see that that's a complete like double liner. Yeah. That next bit is getting a yellow cross on top, so you see a bit of an L shape there. So get a quick L. Uh, and then you got to get, uh, same with the white side, you got to adjust, get the adjacent ones the same. So you see them two are wrong, and so you need to mix them, uh, swap them over. Yeah. Which is all this. Uh, get it wrong there. Yeah. I think I said they're in the right place now. Yeah. Uh, and then you put in the corner pieces into the right place. Uh, that's 
so they're all in the right place now. Some have turned, so these two are turned wrong, but they're all in the right place. Then all you need to do is spin them there. On the last step. Welcome back once again. Thank you very much for joining us. It's the Rovers Roundup live. Uh, it's going to be once a month. We've got the community roundup for you next week. We're looking forward to that. Uh, Tony Smith is with us, uh, head coach. Tony, thanks for being with us today. And uh, today was the day we got the fixtures. I mean, as a coach, how much do you look at? Let me just very quickly uh, point out a couple of highlights for everybody. Uh, Catalan game away, if we can get to it is early July. Uh, the two FC fixtures, uh, we've got a home fixture against Hull FC on the weekend of the 1st and 2nd of July, so early July. And then Hull FC away fixture is 19th to the 22nd uh, on the Rivals round. Magic weekend we know about is early September against Lee Centurions. But as a coach, how much do you actually start looking down the fixture list to see who you've got when? I mean, as I suppose you guys think of, you know, plan of when, when is the next game? Who we're playing and worry about that? Is that how how do you view the the, the arrival of the fixtures? Yeah, oh, listen, there, it, there's some things there that are uh, really relevant for us to look at, and in, in terms of preparation and uh, and you know planning around when we need to travel and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So we do look down there, and logistically we make plans for certain matches. But in in terms of who we're playing and when and where. You know, our approach is to prepare the best we can against everybody and and try to get away from that making making uh, assessments of whether that's going to be hard, easy, or in between. You know, it, for us, um, each game is a chance to go out there and play well and and be exceptional and um, that's what we're trying to be and rather than look at fixtures and you know, I know it's jobs of of um, pundits and commentators to make some assessments on what who should win what games um, that couldn't be further from our minds uh, we look at each, each one of them and go and see how we can attack them and and how we can you know go and get two points each time so you know, the fixture list for mine is opportunities to go and do that. Now, I'm going to go back to you, you know, even last year. Um, if you look at some of the better teams, the two grand finalists, we probably played our best rugby league against the two grand finalists last year. You know, so we've got to, we've got to learn to compete against all the teams and at the same levels and not just raise ourselves for the big teams. And we've got to raise ourselves for the the middle teams, the teams at the bottom and the, and the top equally. So, you know, we're excited that we're back playing and we're excited that we, we've got an opportunity to go out there and, and climb the table. We're all on the same points at the moment and we want to climb as far up that table as we can. And the way to do that is back to, you know, your question, do you just do one match at a time? Absolutely, absolutely. We're going to attack that first game and... And we'll, then after that, we'll go and attack that second game. And it doesn't matter what name is on the list, we're going to attack everything. Uh, a positive thing, of course, at the moment in uh, in the country is is the is the road back to some deal of normality and loosening of the of the lockdown. And one of the things we can look forward to as fans of of Hull Kingston Rovers and as a as a as a uh, as a group of people, a group of players. Uh, is is the potential for a game in front of fans, and we're, we're spotballing this game um, against uh, Lee towards the end of May, where we could potentially have fans in the ground. That that's a, an exciting prospect, isn't it? Sure is. Yeah. Listen, I I've said many times during all this, we're missing the crowds, and and us more than anybody else, I think. You know, and I, I mean that, that we. You know, particularly every other rugby league team in this this country. Um, we haven't played at home, and it'll be a, over a year when we do, and uh, or very close to a year when we play a friendly here soon. So you know, we everybody else has had some time or some time on their own patch. We haven't. We've been away from it. But that aside, I just you know, 
my in my time here, but you know, and I mean that that as head coach, but even before that, the 20 years that I've lived in this country, to come here is daunting. It is daunting. It, you know, the weather conditions, the the wind on that ground, but that crowd over there, you know, is it's never been an easy place to come to if you're an away team. Yeah. Um, I've no, I know now how good it is as a home team coach to have that over there. You know, when you know when I say over there, it's on all parts of the ground. But, yeah. You know, we've got loyal supporters that, you know, and I'm going to say it for the last, you know, ten to fifteen years, there's not that many great times to cheer about where we've dominated a whole lot i know there's been some better years in amongst it and some successful years but yeah. it's been a hard graph but they still turn up they still turn up and they they're still so passionate and behind their team now i think that's one of our greatest assets here now hopefully we've put a team together this year that you know will give them plenty to cheer about not just getting behind us when we're struggling you know, but to lift us when we're going well. And, you know, we've we've missed our home crowd more than all the other teams. That's what I I believe, yeah. you know, and I, and I truly believe that. Um, so the prospect of coming home and, and being at home with them behind us, you know, we're really, really excited. Um, I, the other thing I, I, I'll let you know, when we're going to recruit players, part of our cell is some video of, of our people over there in the stands. Wow. Oh yeah, and and you ask our new recruits, they've seen it. That was part of the, I want to go and be part of that. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, we're very grateful to our supporters. It always seems to get mentioned when uh, you know you hear from the new guys. Uh, what mm -hmm. they've got to say is is the excitement of playing at Craven Park. The loyalty of the fans, you Absolutely. know, has has been mentioned by the club, but it, it's always worth mentioning again in terms of the fact they keep uh, renewing their memberships without any hundred percent guarantee of being able to get to a game and. Uh, continue to pay the direct debits when times are so tight as well and difficult for everyone it is truly amazing and we're very uh, grateful we're for very it. very grateful uh the the club is um we mentioned some of the uh, the more experienced new signings uh, the more uh the more experienced players but we've got yep. plenty of uh new faces around youngsters yep. uh starting out in their careers as well as some more already on board i'll just throw some names out there uh, the likes of Will Tate and Charlie Kavanagh, uh, Anesu Madoti, Will Tate, uh, Moz Mustafa, Tom Ware, Louis Johnson. Um, so some some exciting new players. And what what are you hoping to achieve with these guys in general terms throughout 2021? Oh, we want to keep bringing young players through. You know, preferably local boys, um, and there is a a mix of that within those names that you mentioned there. And, uh, you know, we want to bring our local talent through and want them to want to play for us and for their hometown club and not go elsewhere and be successful. And, yeah. you know, that's we're really keen to do that in the long term and that's why we're investing so much into our academy. Um, so we want to give them a pathway here and we want to produce. But at the same time, if there's talent from outside our area and... Um, we need to identify that as well, and and um, you know some of those names that you mention aren't uh, well. They could be part here now for the future, um, for the present, but certainly for the future. There's some there that we're developing. You know, Will Tate has already played a part, probably, yeah. albeit a little bit too soon for for Will in. But it was great development for him as well last year. And Ma Ma Mikey Lewis is of that age, and he yes. all the game time he got last year. So uh, the the news yesterday of the academy re reformed for twenty twenty one without a, a fixed uh, formal fixture fixture structure is is hope for those guys that can get some game time as part of the academy. Well, the the academy, yeah, we we're hopeful that they're back and. You know, it's been one of the real big sufferers of rugby league, the amateur game and also the junior game. And, uh, you know, some of those guys haven't touched a ball in over a year. Um, and Charlie Kavanagh is one of the names that you, you mentioned there and we signed him up not so long ago. And he, had, he hadn't been able to train with other people for uh, over a year or about a year it was, and, and it showed. Yeah. You know, he was so far behind even those other couple of young guys near his own age because he hadn't been in the in the full-time squad 
He was so far off it. He, fortunately, he's catching up and being in the full-time environment has given him a chance to do that. But what it showed is probably where a lot of these other young guys within our within our academy but within our sport are at the moment and how far and how much they've missed out on. And, um, you know, we've got to be really careful to how we re-engage them and how we re bring them back in. But also we've got to try to bring them back in as well. There'll be some loss to the game. So, you know, we're, we're hopeful that we get the amateur game going soon and, and also the junior game because it's it's crucial crucial for our, our future here at this club and, and at all clubs. A um, couple of quick questions for you then, Tony. Real, real quick questions for you. Uh, fans look at the squad list and see the numbers. How much how much should they read into that in terms of who gets what number? Yeah, it'll depend on what's needed and who's doing what. It's down to form. I've told them, you know, reputations and uh, need to need to turn into form. Otherwise, they're treated like everybody else. And have, have you got a seventeen in your head at, at no, the moment? Is not that, at is the that, moment. No. Is that the sort? Is no. that the sort of thing you're you're doing at the moment? Uh, making some assessments, but. You know, we're playing some games against each other. We're, we're assisting each other in training and, you know, we've got a friendly to help decide that for first game and all that sort of stuff. Um, there's some probably reputations there that get first opportunities, but that doesn't guarantee anything. Um, so, yeah, it's open it's open slather and um, they know that. They're fighting for it. There's, you know, there's, there's a pecking order at the moment, but that pecking order can change very quick. And have we got a, have we got a leader yet? Have we got a captain in mind? Is 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 that uh, we, something you're thinking about at the moment? We, fortunately, we've got a lot of leaders. We we've got a lot of leaders, and in, in in various ways, in different ways. And what we've just got to work out is, um, you know, who's suited to what sort of roles. In you know, there's some there's some leaders in the training ground that are fantastic and really good at that, but maybe not so good on the field. Um, there's some you know, guys who are going to be good on the field that don't do so much out on the, you know, back on the training park and vice versa. So, you know, fortunately, we've got a lot of leadership within our group. Um, you know, it's unfortunate in some ways that we've got to put a tag on one or two. Yeah. Because there's actually more than that within our group, you know, that that lead up. And, and some of them aren't just the experienced guys. Some of those are, are young guys who speak up and have got a a good football, a good rugby brain and a good leadership brain as well. That's um, a good problem though, isn't it? When you, yeah. you're struggling to decide who's yeah, yeah. the leader of the leaders. Yeah. Oh, so, listen, if you don't have leadership, you know, you're, yeah. you're, you're in trouble. Yeah, sure. But to put a tag on any one and give them the ex extra responsibility, I suppose I'll have to do a club captain at some stage. Yes. Um, and there's a number of people that could fill that position uh, very, very well. We talked about the fixtures and taking one thing at a time. Well, the, the, the first fixture, the next fixture, uh, it is that friendly game against Castleford. It's 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 a re it's coming up. It could, just a couple of weeks away, the boys will be uh, on the pitch. Um, what can you tell us about that in terms of your planning and and what you want to achieve out of that game? Yeah, oh, listen, we've got a number of people vying for positions. Um, we'll we'll try out a couple of people in a couple of various positions so we'll make some changes throughout the game and um, you know uh, I'm going to try to give enough people an opportunity uh, to put their names forward but some will miss out we can't play you know we we had uh, 26 people training today and I'm certainly not going to put out two teams um, in one friendly you know it's it's just not going to happen we need we've only got one friendly and we we need to get some people um, enough game time to be ready for the the competition start against Catalan two weeks later. So um, we'll we'll make some changes. Um, those people who deserve it will get a chance on that day. Um, but we certainly need to, you know, have a decent hit out to those who um, are probably just ahead at the time um, in terms of the that pecking order. After that, they're going to have to you know, keep their form to keep their positions because there's going to be plenty waiting in the wings to um, to replace them. A good run out, just no injuries. <laughs> That'd be nice too. Yeah. That would be really nice. Well, that, well it's we rugby can, league, isn't it's it? Rugby it's rugby league, you yeah. Know, that can happen. But we're in good shape at the moment, so hopefully that'll keep going. Good stuff. And the excitement's still there for you, Tony, just as, just as, as it ever was. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Oh, Looking forward to the new season again. 
Very, very much so. You know, uh, last year was a tough year for everybody. And, yeah. and under the circumstances that we had and, you know, in the start that we had with Mossy and I, I, I listen, I'm, I can't say it didn't affect us all here. It did. It mm. absolutely did. And I uh, keep referring to it, but the big man's close to our heart. He's in it, comes into training once or twice a week now and he's, he's helping us out with some some stuff in, in, in the welfare side of things as well as, as best he can. But, you know, the, uh, he's been a real inspiration to us, but we're also trying to help him a fair bit at the moment too. Yeah. He's he's done a bit pretty tough. So um, we're optimistic about our year. We're, we're going to attack it and, and um, enjoy it. And, you know, I think we're in a whole different place to where we were at this time last year. So um, we're, we're going to go for it. That, um, that's you know really what we're about this year is is trying to change the whole face of what we're about exciting times i'm really looking forward to it tony thank you very much indeed for joining us uh, it's been great uh, the rovers roundup live is up and running again for a new season it's been a delight to have our head coach tony smith with us today and watch out for further roundups throughout the season we uh, want to bring you all the big names and we promise we'll do our best, uh, best to bring you all those uh, people to the screens through the season. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the community roundup will be here next week and uh, we'll look forward to, to that as well. So thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you again very soon from myself and from Tony. Thank you very much. That's been the very first Rovers Roundup Live. <laughs>